Now there's a handful of different ways to darken images in Photoshop, but I'm gonna break down three of the easiest and most beginner friendly methods right now. So going in reverse order with number three as my least favorite, but still a good option for targeting your images is the exposure adjustment layer. Now I've already brought my image here into Photoshop and once you're inside, you can access your exposure adjustment by clicking on the exposure adjustment icon within the adjustments panel or you can go to the bottom of your layers panel and go to exposure and that will give you the same result. Once you've created an exposure adjustment, it will appear as a new layer and all of its adjustments will come up in the properties panel right here. Now with the exposure slider, you have three different options. The first is exposure, which is a term I'm sure you're already familiar with, which controls the overall brightness of your photo. So if you increase the exposure, everything will get brighter. If you decrease the exposure, everything will get darker from your shadows, midtones, and highlights. Now with the offset and gamma correction, that's where things change up a little bit. With offset, you are adjusting the shadow and midtone values, where gamma correction, you're only affecting the midtones. So how you can use these all together is using the overall exposure to darken and then adjusting the offset and gamma correction to refine the contrast in your photo to help it not look washed out. Let me give you an example. If I darken down the exposure like so, that will darken out the entire image, but now my photo looks just a little bit bland and not very contrasty anymore. So I can change the offset by bringing that down. That's going to darken the shadows and the midtones, but then to lift the midtones, it's kind of backwards with gamma correction. I'm going to reduce it. And as I reduce the gamma correction, it's going to lift those midtones a bit. And that way I still get a bit of contrast in the shadows. The highlights are a little bit darker because of the exposure, but then the mid-tones are still nice and visible. So turning that adjustment on and off, it adds a slight darkening to our image without being too overwhelming. So that is the first example, but again, my least favorite because the next two examples are way better. Now deleting this exposure adjustment, this brings us into our second option, which is the brightness and contrast adjustment layer. This one's a lot easier because there's only two sliders to use. Once once again, you can access this adjustment in the adjustments panel, clicking brightness and contrast, or you can go to the bottom of your layers panel and go to brightness and contrast. Once you have that new layer created, just like before, your settings will be opened in the properties panel. Now, since you only have two different options, they're kind of self-explanatory. Brightness will shift your entire tonal range to favor the highlights or favor the shadows, depending on which way you move the slider. Whereas the contrast will just change the intensity of your shadows and your highlights to give your photo a more washed out or less washed out appearance. Since I want to darken this image, I'll bring down the brightness like so. So that's going to darken everything down, including the highlights. And in my opinion, I think it darkens down the highlights a lot nicer with the brightness and contrast over the exposure, but that's just me. Now, once you've reduced the brightness, you can play around with the contrast here and just add a little bit more life in the shadows if you'd like by increasing the contrast, or you can kind of have a faded look by bringing it down. Now, if you aren't sure what you wanna do with this adjustment layer, you just can't quite find the right sweet spot for your image. What you can do instead is actually just click this auto button right here. Photoshop will work its magic based on your image and it will automatically adjust these values for you and then give your image a nice, clean, darkened result. So turning that on and off, I feel like that made a really nice difference and we only had to click once because this was all done with the auto feature. So although slightly better than exposure, in my opinion, it gives a bit of a better result with fewer options and fewer sliders to get confused by, brightness and contrast is still limited because you are only editing your overall brightness and your overall contrast. You can't affect the midtones and shadows and highlights and whites individually. That's where this next and my favorite option for darkening images comes into play, which is camera raw. Now, if you open a raw photo in Photoshop, camera raw will automatically open for you. But if you have already opened a photo into Photoshop and it's like this on my screen right now, you can open camera raw quite easily. But before you do, I'd recommend converting your layer into a smart object so that you can access your camera raw adjustments later on if needed. In this case, my image is already converted to a smart object as you can see with this little icon. But if you do not see this icon, you can right click on your layer and just go down to convert to smart object and then you'll get the same type of thing. Now, once your image is converted and selected, we're gonna go up to filter and then down here to camera raw filter. 
that's going to open up a new window for us in Photoshop. And this is Camera Raw. Now here, if you're familiar with Lightroom, you'd probably be like, wow, this looks really familiar. And that's because it has a lot of the same settings as Lightroom, including the exposure, contrast, highlights, shadows, whites, and blacks. Wow. Now with these sliders right here within the basics panel, you have the ultimate control for darkening your images. So I can bring down the overall exposure just a little bit, but then I can focus in on what areas of the photo I want to darken the most. And in this case, that's the sky and the snow, which is gonna be the highlights and the whites. So going to my highlight slider, I can drag that down. That's gonna darken down my highlights for me. I can bring down the whites as well. It's gonna darken down the whites a bit, tone that down. And then to give my photo a more rich feel, I can play around with the blacks and the shadows to add a bit more contrast. Bringing down the blacks will make those darks feel a bit more rich. And then same with the shadows, I'll see what options I got in there. Maybe I'll lift that up a little bit. So now turning that on and off, you can see it's added a nice subtle darkening to our entire image really easily just using these few sliders and we have way more options than any of the other adjustments. Now, with all this said, it's worth noting that when you're working with raw photos in Camera Raw, it's best to make all of your adjustments before you bring it into the actual Photoshop workspace because in Camera Raw, you can edit your raw photo as a raw file, meaning you'll have a lot more information to work with. However, once your photo goes into Photoshop, it becomes a TIFF file which doesn't have as much info to recover the highlights and shadows and things as your raw file would. Now to give you an example of this, let me open up this same photo, but as a raw file. So going to file and then open, and then I'll select my image of choice here. Camera raw automatically opens for me, but this time check it out. If I bring down the exposure, look how much more detail and information I have in these highlights. Whereas in the previous example in camera raw, that kind of just looked flat and at a certain point there's no more information left. And that's because we weren't editing the original raw file anymore, it was a converted file. So it's best to do all of this type of darkening adjustments to a raw file before you bring it into the main Photoshop workspace. But don't worry, Camera Raw will open up automatically for you when you open a raw file. So just remember to make these adjustments before you click open. Just to show you a side-by-side -side comparison, take a look at how the highlights in the original raw image looks compared to the converted TIFF file that was already in Photoshop. You can see that the highlight recovery is way better when I just go straight into Camera Raw and I don't bring it into Photoshop first. Now with all that said, since we used a smart object to use our Camera Raw filter, it will appear as a smart filter right here. So if you double click on these words Camera Raw, it'll reopen Camera Raw with all of your adjustments that you've made. And with this little white box here, it's called the Smart Filters Layer Mask. You can paint black or white onto this layer mask to hide or reveal parts of your camera raw adjustments. So since we just darkened this image, let's say for example, I didn't want any of these darkening adjustments to take place in the lower half of my photo. Well, in that case, I could use something like a gradient to apply onto this layer mask. So grabbing my gradient tool, setting a foreground to transparent gradient like so, making sure my foreground color is set to black and that layer mask is selected. I can just click and drag over the area. I don't want the darkening adjustments to take place. And now I've brightened up that lower section because we've added that black AKA transparent area onto our smart filters layer mask. So when I turn that on and off, you can see how it just keeps that bottom corner totally untouched while only the highlights are being adjusted by this filter. Now the same thing would apply if you had an exposure adjustment. I could bring this down for example and let's say I only wanted this to affect in the snow, I could take this layer mask and make it completely invisible by pressing Command or Control I to invert it, therefore making it completely transparent. Now when I grab my brush tool by pressing B and setting my foreground color to white, now if I go and paint over something I wanna darken, notice how it is being applied onto my photo only where I paint because we are painting white, aka visibility onto our layer mask, revealing this darkening adjustment. So this works really well if you wanna darken like just your sky or a subject or something like that. Now if you don't wanna work with layer masks, you can also use adjustments inside of Camera Raw. So if I double click on my Camera Raw filter, reopening Camera Raw, I can go and click on this masking tab here. And now I have a whole bunch of different options to selectively adjust my photo. So let's say I want to add a similar gradient to what we did with the layer mask. I could grab my linear gradient here and then just click and drag out on the area I want to adjust. 
And then now I will only adjust the area that's within that gradient. Now this whole new masking setup in Camera Raw is exactly the same as what's in Lightroom. And if you are confused by how all this works, I explain everything you need to know in another video you can find in the corner right now. That will be really helpful to you if you want to figure out how to get the most out of your masking and selective exposure adjustments. Anyways, my name is Brendan from BeWellCreative.com and I'll catch you back here next time for another new tutorial. See you then.